I'm delighted to have been asked to read a few of my translations of poems by Lars Gustafsson. These were published by Blood Axe Books in 2015, Selected Poems. I hope you enjoy them. Fichte by the Kerosene Lamp. When the soft darkness of August suddenly closed in, it was as if the lake down there quickened its pulse, breathed otherwise. Unknown animals perhaps peered out of their holes in the bank and the kerosene lamp was lit. It was like a small lighthouse in various ledges of glass and porcelain, and the hot stream of heated air must be kept away from the curtain. Very careful about that, never place the lamp under the curtain. It produced, strictly speaking, a great deal of heat, the difference could clearly be felt in the room, and not much light. And around this lamp flew an angry, small, steel blue insect. The philosopher Fichte had somehow extracted himself from the thick brown book on the table where he presumably lived, circled until the flame took him. But then the evening was over. Number 11, Sestina. There was a time each grain of time was whole as is the tennis ball when hanging a razor-sharp hundredth of a second, waiting above the net. Not recently or soon, but a third something, which is all we see. The rest is expectation or is time that was. Not mine, though. Someone else's time. The clean shot is what once more makes you whole. This is the sole reality we see. Expectations and memories fill a mainly random personality. Soon for the next ball, you can see it waiting. Who is it though, that stands there ready waiting? All time is eaten up by thoughts of time that was, or something that will happen soon. Expectations and the rest, memories. Whole is only he who no longer sees the second ball in the ball there is to see. Such an event as that we really see is more anonymous than we were waiting for. Years and princes existing in a past age seem to live in a stiffened time. By name, we make the broken vessel whole. It's born with caution to a well that soon seems deep and full of powerful voices. Soon a lonely echo is all that's left. You see the gleaming water's mirror, which is whole. It lies down there below you, waiting. So inaccessible. It's you. Your time is brief. A single, a single stone's enough. And a thousand splinters now glitter in a well against whose gray stone sides there are soon flickering reflections which are time, the only time we understand. We see in splinters. In stiffened posture, we stand waiting. The clean shot is what once more makes you whole. We all live in a nameless world. We see. We die as soon as we recall. Die waiting. There was a time each grain of time was whole. Events on the periphery of a summer day. The trap bumblebee cusses and buzzes at the window in a foreign language. The old coffee mill can't stop going on about rationing and war. A splendid spider's web has taken over grandma's bicycle, an Evangeli Harold, no longer for sale. From the century-old bush, gooseberries, brown as amber and weary, fall to the ground one by one. It is, in short, late here on earth. In the wall-mounted telephone, the afternoon storm is already crackling. 
on the relationship to music. I imagine a completely enclosed sphere. This enclosed sphere contains something. A strong magnetic field orders iron filings in patterns through compact walls. This is how I make use of music. And neither the music nor I know what we really are dealing with. The eel and the well. In old Scania, there was a custom. Young eels from the sea were let down into the black depths of the wells. These eels then spent their entire lives imprisoned in the darkness of the deep wells. They keep the water crystal clear and clean. When on occasions the well eel comes up, white, frighteningly large, caught in the pail, blind and coiling in and out of its body's enigmas, unaware, everyone hurries to submerge it again. I often feel myself as being not only in the well eel's stead, but well and eel at the same time, imprisoned in myself, but this self already something else. I exist there and wash it clean with my twisting, miry, white-bellied presence in the darkness. Flight of cranes over Scorner, April morning, Villanella. The light tracks of a bird are hard to find again. The number of wild cranes is also very few. Soon shall the withered grass burn till no straws remain. This morning was a joyful woman's reign, whose voice in lust's short instant rush rose pure and true. The light tracks of a bird are hard to find again. All birds are in some secret goddess's domain who taught them flight and unrest, fleeing, staying too. Soon shall the withered grass burn till no straws remain. They now change places at the front, the forward dame by her male consort, and slide off towards the blue. The light tracks of a bird are hard to find again. Unfathomable moment. You cannot retain your form, nor can you slide away anew. Soon shall the withered grass burn till no straws remain. And this white blind born morning would force me retain the guilt that was my death, which I in secret had to rue. The light tracks of a bird are hard to find again. Soon shall the withered grass burn till no straws remain. The silence of the world before Bach. There must have existed a world before the trio sonata in D, a world before the A minor partita. But what was that world like? A Europe of large, unresonating spaces, everywhere unknowing instruments where musicalisches Opfer and wohltemperiertes Klavier had never passed over a keyboard. Lonely, remote churches, where the soprano voice of the Easter Passion had never in helpless love twined itself round the gentler movements of the flute. Gentle expanses of landscape, where only old woodcutters are heard with their axes the healthy sound of strong dogs in winter, and, like a bell, skates biting into glassy ice. The swallows swirling in the summer air, the shell that the child listens to, and nowhere Bach, nowhere Bach. Skating silence of the world before Bach. <laughs> 